Recently, I watched Mike Klum's documentary surrounding Boogie. Now, I'm talking about specifically, of course, Boogie2988, the YouTuber who played Francis and has done all sorts of uh, content over the course of his career, and on top of that is most well known for being quite overweight and, you know, struggling with losing weight over the years. I was really weirded out by this overall, uh, you know, documentary because the trailer for it shows Boogie with his young girlfriend 20 years old while he is 49 uh you know basically having sex with her in the documentary there's like a part of them in the bathtub naked as well as her riding him we also get shots of boogie with hookers and on top of that i will say that this entire thing makes boogie look terrible i have no idea why he wanted to participate in this and i have no idea how mike Klum got so close to him in order to get him to devolve all these things I don't know if Boogie thought this was gonna be a puff piece but basically it's called the sad dark life of Boogie 2988 on top of that I mean I admit yeah his girlfriend is of age so we can't go too hard on it but him being 49 and his girlfriend being 20 and then seeing them together in the bathtub naked just definitely gives me the wrong vibes however I will say that uh, I'm, this video is really going to be just a short review as well as a couple things that I noticed within there that I wanted to talk about. Um, however, I will first of all say Mike Klum is a very, very, very good director. The cinematography on display within this documentary is top tier. He is very good at weaving together a narrative, and on top of that, he's very good at getting proper shots, really good lighting, and setting an atmosphere that feels very consistent throughout the entire documentary. This can be a real issue sometimes where you have people that don't know how to pace these documents, documentaries, they don't know how to exactly handle their kind of topics and whatnot, and this entire thing, I will say, he thought might have been a little bit too depressing, but I think that that worked perfectly. Boogie is definitely a really strange guy, and his life is pretty fucking depressing a lot of the time, if I'm being honest with you, and allowing for that to all shine through, and allowing for Boogie to kind of just hang himself with his own words, allowed there, for be, uh, allowed there to be a level of consistency, as well as honesty because there's nothing really here that felt like it was narrativized. It really felt like, even though, you know, maybe some parts felt like they were scripted a little bit, like when uh, Boogie goes in to sell his cards, his Magic the Gathering cards, uh, and he's like, he gets less than he expected. Like, that felt pretty scripted and things like that. But for the most part, we really just get Boogie himself talking about the various situations in his life, how he feels about them, and how they came about. The thing that I think makes Boogie look so terrible, however, is he is constantly putting down the pos or the positive opportunities that he's had over his life and playing down the uh, you know positive things that he's been able to do and then trying to play up the uh, sympathy aspect and play up how bad his life is overall one of the examples I can say is that he apparently like took a hooker to Disneyland which I have no problem with hookers I have had a hooker before I think hookers are okay I think hookers you know are actually even really cool to a certain degree and also I think that there's validity in like taking a woman like an escort out and just like trying to you know have fun with a woman and conversate with her and etc like I, I I think that finding companionship is hard and so having you know some way to get companionship uh, is definitely important and it's something we really lack in today's society however Boogie talks about being able to do these things and he spends absurd amount of money doing it however he then starts to whine bitch and complain about the fact that he spends all this money doing so and that he still doesn't feel fulfilled afterwards. At the end of the day, he almost plays it up like it gives him no joy whatsoever. However, if this were the case and you really weren't getting any joy from, say, going and taking a hooker to Disneyland, etc., then why did you spend so much money and continue to do it in the first place? It's things like this or things like when Boogie talks about at his table how uh, there is uh, he, he's sitting around with his friends and he says, when are we going to start bringing around girlfriends? 
things, guys. And I'm not just talking about hookers, because, you know, that's what I've been bringing around. It's clear that all of his friends look quite sad because they don't have the money for hookers, probably. They don't have the ability to have the lavish lifestyle that Boogie has had. And so Boogie is, in a way, almost bragging about his ability to bring hookers around. And he knows damn well that they're not just going to be like, yeah, we're going to get a girlfriend tomorrow. Like, obviously, this is not that kind of group. Uh, the that also that type of situation makes boogie feel super self-centered and really like he doesn't understand the privileged position that he's in especially considering his friends uh, in this moment are also overweight and just don't have like the fame or following that he has uh, and so then for him to continue to complain bitch and moan about these things while he has the capability to do shit like that just makes him feel like a real fucking douchebag to be perfectly honest with you and like I said, I wouldn't judge somebody for spending their money on hookers or gambling or whatever the fuck it is. I, I remember hearing that Boogie had a gambling problem. I don't know if that's the case. Apparently, he lost a bunch of money on crypto. You know, those are terrible decisions that you made. And again, like, you had the money to lose on crypto to begin with. I'm not going to feel bad for you really like that. You're still making money on YouTube. You can go and you can revamp your YouTube channel. And there's a million ways that you could end up, you know, making money... Uh, or more money on your channel but instead you just insist on going back to the same old content doing the same old thing that nobody wants to see anymore obviously at a certain point you have to start switching up your content and you have to do something new but boogie refuses to do that because it's too much fucking work that he just doesn't want to put in this also becomes clear when for example mike clum suggests that he goes and finds a real job or i don't mean real job but goes and finds just a job in general he sends him over to uh, you know somebody that he thinks can help him get a job and uh boogie goes in there and he's constantly saying i can't do this i can't do that there's basically nothing that boogie seemingly can do and then he calls mike clum afterwards gets all pissed off and says i'm gonna go back to making content i'm a youtuber and uh, you know regardless you know it, it's it's not just that you need to make content you need to make content that people actually want to see you can't just go back and do the same lazy content that you've always been doing on top of that you can't sit there and complain when you have the ability to like change your circumstances but instead you're going to your audience to try to pull money and donations from them because you've made a couple of bad decisions and blown all sorts of money on hookers and so yeah it's things like that that make boogie feel like a real piece of shit where he goes around again complains begs his audience for money makes everybody try to feel bad for him and honestly is very narcissistic as well when it comes to interactions with his girlfriend one of the saddest parts of it and he even acknowledges and posted a whole video about how this is the darkest part of the documentary is when he makes his girlfriend cry because he directly says to her that he's gonna die soon my risk for stroke or heart attack is astronomical i am essentially a walking time bomb yeah i know <laughs> Essentially, his young girlfriend is sitting out with him on a couch and he's kind of going over his medical history and telling her, hey, yeah, so this is all uh, the reasons that I'm probably going to die young. And she, of course, immediately breaks down into tears. She's uh, probably aware of the fact that Boogie is not a healthy individual. I mean, everybody knows that. So for him to do this really just feels like a way to get a girl to cry over him. I've known these guys in the past and basically it usually just feels like a level of emotional manipulation so that way they know that I have the power to make a girl cry over me. It's really sad, really sick, really disgusting, and super fucking narcissistic. And that's what really seems like is what is on display when we see that interaction between him and his girlfriend. And one of the things that I'll say here that I noticed too, that he kind of just mentioned on the side for some reason, and I guess didn't think people would actually realize what this was, but he mentions that he is on buprenorphine when he's going through his medication list. Uh Losartan, tramadol, buprofen, sertraline, 
Uh, did I? Buprenorphine, for those who are unaware, is actually Suboxone, which is a drug that is used for mat uh, or medication assisted therapy, uh, where basically it's in order to get people off of drugs. Uh, you know, if you have an addiction to fentanyl, if you have addiction to heroin, if you have an addiction to Percocet, etc., then you might, uh, you know, go on to Suboxone as a way uh, to stifle any type of withdrawals. So that way you don't have to go through the hard withdrawal uh, effects right away and that way you can get therapy and work through any issues that you might have in the meantime and then you can wean off the suboxone in the long run this is supposed to of course help people again avoid withdrawal so that way they can like continue their daily jobs go to work things like that as well as so that way they can get that you know uh, a therapy and then it's usually easier to wean off of something like suboxone in the long run because it's not a full agonist of your opioid receptors it's a really good drug that I do, you know, think that plenty of people should be on. It's very useful. It's either this or methadone that is typically used to help people with addiction to opiates. And opiates are a big problem in society uh, in America at the moment. They really drain bank accounts as well. If you have an addiction to something like Percocet, for example, you're going to be paying like $20 a pill, maybe more. So that's why, you know, insurances help cover these things and it helps people with their bank accounts and it helps people get off drugs in the long run. And so that is the drug that Boogie is on, buprenorphine, aka Suboxone. Now, I will say it also can be used for chronic pain. However, usually methadone is going to be used for chronic pain uh, in the long run a lot more commonly than Suboxone because Suboxone, again, is only a partial agonist of the opioid receptors, making it less effective for analgesia in the long run. So, what am I saying? The odds are that, you know, this probably isn't being used for chronic pain, and it's probably that Boogie had an addiction in the past of, uh, you know, some type of opiate, whether it be fentanyl, whether it be heroin, or whether it be Percocet, or fucking hydrocodone, codeine, something he seemingly had an addiction to. He doesn't mention this, and he doesn't mention, like, gambling or anything like that, although, again, maybe gambling is just rumors that were going on online. I can't really, you know, speak to that, but this medication, he did clarify himself that he was on. So, I think that when we're looking at where did all of Boogie's money go, that definitely is probably one of the places it went alongside the hookers is a drug problem. He had a drug problem, he had a hooker problem, and then on top of that, my guess is that he's just completely lying about, uh, you know, his money monthly bills. One of the things that's very weird when he breaks down his monthly bills within this entire documentary is the fact that he basically says that he's paying like a thousand dollars to health insurance, but then he's also paying an extra $325 to labs every month, $500 to doctor's visits, another like $800 to some other aspect like medications or something like that. And when you're spending a thousand dollars already in health insurance, that's the whole point is that it's supposed to help you cover things like labs is one of the most basic ones that are very heavily covered by insurance or, uh, you know, again, medication, etc. You know, it, I think he lives in Arkansas. I don't know if they have some type of uh, insurance plans in Arkansas like they do in California, but I know like even in California, you can get various like uh, government assisted plans that really help a lot as well, especially if you have pre-existing conditions, which Boogie does seemingly have. However, again, uh, even if you don't have those types of things in your state, I do not not believe that you're spending a thousand dollars on health insurance and then like another fifteen hundred dollars every month on all of these other copays there's just no way otherwise you're getting scammed so stop paying the fucking health insurance and so these are the things that make it so hard to even watch this documentary, knowing that Boogie is not being forthcoming about everything, that he's seemingly kind of bullshitting in spots, that he's acting so narcissistic that he's going in front of his friends and pulling like all these weird shit or these like, oh, feel sorry for me cards when he probably has the most privileged life out of all of them there. It's fucking sad, and I don't think we're ever going to see Boogie break out of this shit. I think that this is kind of where Boogie is at. He's probably going to be like this forever, and it's really sad. You know, I, I don't know what happened. You know, back in the day, it seemed like he was just so much more down-to-earth and pleasant, but over the, you know, years, something just seemingly got to his brain, and he is now just a real, real narcissistic piece of garbage. All right. Well, anyway, guys, what did you guys think of this documentary? Did you see it? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Definitely like I 
I said, shout out Mike Plum for how like good the cinematography and everything is. However, I do find it very weird of you, uh, Clum, to have done the fucking uh, the fucking of Boogie. I I don't know why we needed to have him naked in a bathtub with his twenty year old girlfriend. It, it just felt weird to watch. Uh, so just skip past that part is my recommendation. Uh, besides that, guys, if there's anything else you want us to talk about here on the channel, movie news, reviews, etc., let me know in the comments below as well. Besides that, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That'll pop up during the outro and the rest of our links are down in the description too we have gaming sessions for gaming content movie sessions for trailer content smoking sessions for movie news and reviews and the tri podcast for our podcast channel and besides that guys we have a discord you can join as well linked in the description all right guys i'll see you all in the next one Peace.